The following video contains spoilers from the movie Tenet. It just came out and it's fantastic. So if you haven't seen it yet, you should go watch that and then watch this video. In fact, this video contains spoilers for just about every Christopher Nolan movie. So if you haven't seen those, I don't really know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what kind of choices led you to a place where you're watching me talk on YouTube, but you don't want to watch one of the greatest filmmakers of our time make amazing movies, but that's okay. We're here. Let's get into it. There's a lot of things that can define a director. It could be a visual style, like the coloring book-esque sweeping cinematography of Zack Schneider. Or it could be dialogue. I think of the slow pacing of a Martin Scorsese movie. You talking to me? Or the gratuitous in-your-face lines of Quentin Tarantino. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Or it could be explosions and lens flare if you're from the Michael Bay school of thinking when it comes to movies. But I think what defines Christopher Nolan isn't just a visual style or the actors that he chooses or the way he paces his scenes. I think it's that every single one of his movies is defined by time. Now this can play out at times in obvious ways, like the film that put Nolan on the map, Memento, where the movie is played out in reverse by a protagonist who can't remember what's happening. But today I want to focus on three movies that play with time in very different ways, but I think to similar effect. That is Christopher Nolan movies Interstellar, Dunkirk, and his most recent, Tenet. Now on the surface, Dunkirk, Interstellar, and Tenet are very different. Dunkirk is a movie that won awards for how historically accurate it was to World War II, about a fundamental turning point, a tragedy turned to triumph that helped turn the war around. And then Interstellar is a movie about a sci-fi future and finding a new home on a dying planet. And Tenet is kind of about the same thing, there's just a lot less Matthew McConaughey yelling at a bookshelf. <laughs> but while all these movies are about time, they all handle them in different ways. And I want to dig into Tenet because I think Tenet in some ways makes Interstellar points better. I think in Tenet, Christopher Nolan perfected the movie he was trying to make in Interstellar, at least from the standpoint of the plot and the beats. Now Tenet is a movie about time travel, but it does it through the lens of a whodunit. A character who is thrown into a world trying to figure out what on earth is happening around them because they have no idea. The only thing they know is a word and a hand gesture. Tenet. Now in Tenet, we come to find out that in the future, the earth is running out of resources. They're facing a bleak future where there's nothing left and so they turn to the past. Much like Interstellar, this is a story about a dying world and looking for a new home. But in Tenet, the future finds a way to reverse entropy to turn back time and make the world start to run in reverse. Now from a science perspective, this requires a bit of suspended disbelief, but from a science fiction standpoint, I actually think this is a ridiculously powerful metaphor and something that drives the story forward in a really interesting way. And while it can seem a little heavy handed as an analogy towards conservationism, I actually think it's much more powerful in the context of personal story. So the protagonist of Tenet is traveling forward through this world where people are moving forward and backwards. And if it sounds confusing, it's because it is. I'm talking about Inception. That's right, Morty. This is going to be a lot like that, except, you know, it's going to maybe it make sense. Inception made sense. You don't have to try to impress me, Morty. And I will say, I actually think this is one of the Christopher Nolan movies that was more easy to immediately understand than some of the others, but it's still very confusing in its own right. And as we get towards the end, we realize that our character hasn't just been traveling forward through the story, he's actually been traveling backwards as well. See, the spoiler at the end of Tenet, the big reveal, is that the protagonist has actually set all the events of the story into motion. He's the one who started the rebellion against the future's attempt to destroy the past. Now often what happens with movies like this is people create all sorts of YouTube videos like this one trying to explain or fit together the different pieces in a way that makes rational explanation. And if you're hoping to find a video that explained Tenet, there are tons of great ones on YouTube. I watched a lot of them just like I did with Inception and Interstellar and all of these other amazing but somewhat confusing movies. I didn't get Inception. I didn't get Inception. Oh, there's so many layers. The point that I want to make with Tenet is not to try to piece it together or to talk about the physics or the realisticness of it, but it's to point out what I think Christopher Nolan is doing. 
Now there's all sorts of suspended belief when it comes to time in movies. See, we won't bat an eye when a movie or a TV show uses a flashback to explain what's happening, or when things cut forward in a heist movie and then we find out the plot twist after the fact, or my personal least favorite, when the movie begins right at the very end and then cuts to black and three weeks earlier. But in each one of those instances, we are familiar with what's happening. It's a part of the genre of movie telling. We know that when we sit down, events don't necessarily have to play out in chronological order. In fact, directors have taken this to another level. I'm thinking of the film Arrival, where you find out after the fact that the events playing out on screen haven't even been in order. What I think Christopher Nolan is doing is he's taking a guise in a movie, something that can happen in a script, and he's injecting it into the actual movie world. See, a film like Dunkirk uses time in a much more traditional sense. Christopher Nolan chooses events and plays them out of order in order for us to comprehend one single moment. I think that works because Dunkirk is a movie about duty. It's about doing the right thing in the face of the odds being against you and how just a few people doing the right thing can turn a tragedy into a triumph. And I think that works uniquely in a war movie because it takes one single scene, one single moment where four or five things that are happening and provides emotional meaning behind each and every one of those individual decisions. But I think the project of Tenet and the project of Interstellar is a little bit different. See, in writing those movies, it's possible to manipulate time via a flashback or via playing events out of order. What Christopher Nolan does is he takes that mechanism of manipulating time and injects it into the script via the lens of science fiction. So why mess with time? I will mess with time. I will mess with time. What is it that time allows us to do? What mechanism does it serve that just a flashback or a cut couldn't convey? See, Tenet and Interstellar are both movies about the future, but we can't just pop into the future via time travel and see that things are wrong and then go back and try to fix them. Or maybe we could. See, Tenet isn't a time travel movie exactly the way Back to the Future is a time travel movie. Sure, they both deal with the science fiction side of traveling through time and space, but instead of the future coming back to the past to save the past, the future is coming back to the past to destroy it. Star Trek, Terminator, Time Cop, Time After Time, Quantum Leap, Wrinkle in Time, Somewhere in Time, Hot Tub Time Machine, Hot Tub Time Machine, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, basically any movie that deals with time travel. Die Hard? No, that's not why. This is known. And that I think drives at the central morality of Christopher Nolan's movies, the central theme that time is used to explore. And that is a belief in a positive future. See, the negative characters, the villains in Tenet are defined by their belief that the future is a bleak, dark place. They're defined by the belief that nothing we can do now will stop the future from running out of resources and stop the future from being a horrible place so that our only option is to raid the past, to go back, to reverse entropy, and to destroy it all. And I think you see that same theme play out, though maybe a little less effectively in Interstellar. See, the heroes of both stories are defined by the opposite belief the belief that the future could be a bright place. In fact, the future could be a better place than this place right here and now. It's defined by this inherent optimism that even though the world might be a dark place now, even though the future could possibly be dark, the belief that your actions today could positively impact the future. And that I think is where the films Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Tenet all intersect, because I think that's the message of all of them. And it's a message that can't just be played out linearly, it's one that's best shown through the manipulation of time. See, in Dunkirk, that's done through different timelines, through different characters, and you're never really quite certain who the protagonist is as these events are played out on land and sea and air. But they all converge on one singular moment, a moment that turns a tragedy to a triumph, that's concerned with a handful of people who believe, despite everything, the future could be a better place. That I think is the defining element of Tenet, of this group of people trying to fight the future, destroying the present. The belief that they could, via this technology and a little bit of hope, turn things around and build the future into a brighter place. And I think it's the core theme of Interstellar as well. 
where Matthew McConaughey is trying to figure out what's out there and what he believes and then paradoxically becomes the person who helps himself. Now, I said earlier that Christopher Nolan's use of time has a powerful lesson in the context of story to teach us about ourselves. In order to do that, I wanna use these words from Matthew McConaughey not in Interstellar, but in his acceptance speech for winning Best Actor. I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. <laughs> so I turned 25, 10 years later. That same person comes to me and goes, so are you a hero? And I was like, not even close. Now, as cheesy as those words can seem from a certain angle, I actually think there's real wisdom in what Matthew McConaughey has to say. It's the wisdom that is reflected in the moral conflicts of Christopher Nolan's films, and one that I think plays out in our lives every day. And that is the question of, do you see your future self as someone that you want to be, as your hero? The question I think that we all have to face, the question of optimism, is whether or not we believe the future could be a brighter place than today. And I think that in Interstellar and Tenet and Christopher Nolan's films about time, we see a warning. A warning of the kinds of evils we will permit and become if we start to believe that the future will be darker than the present. See, none of us ever want to become the villains. And I'm not advocating here for some kind of simple, we are the world optimism. Instead, it's the dangers of believing that nothing we do could make the future a better place of looking at the big problems in the world, the very real, very scary problems of 2020 and all the years beyond, and thinking that just a few people doing the right thing against all the odds wouldn't make the world at least a slightly better place. I think it's the wisdom found in seeing your future self as somebody who is bigger and better and more awesome than your current self, instead of seeing them as somebody who is just stuck doing the same things with all the same problems. And it's a very real struggle that each and every one of us face. A struggle that I think is externalized on the screen to Christopher Nolan's use of time. The struggle of believing in a brighter, better future. My hero's always 10 years away. I'm never gonna be my hero. I'm not gonna attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video. My name is Zach with The Hero's Journal. I absolutely love Tenet. Uh, I've been watching Christopher Nolan movies for as long as I've been watching movies, and I think that was one of my favorite ones yet. We'll see how I feel in a year, but for now, it's up there. Uh, we created the Heroes Journal to help people discover their personal story and to use the best of goal-setting psychology and storytelling theory to see how those things play out in their life. So if you want to learn more about how that works or read the reviews, you can visit theheroesjournal.co. Finally, we make videos every week talking about goal setting science and our favorite fandoms and where they intersect. So if this video is interesting to you, you can hit like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.